Um, our next speaker is George Fuenzalita, who is the Vice President and General Manager uh, at ENCODE. And ENCODE um, is the Strategy Consulting Division for Ericsson. Um, and George is a subject matter expert. He's had 20 years of experience in the telecom space, um, developing various wireless strategy technologies and solutions um, at ENCODE. Uh, he's responsible for basically, uh, he is the general manager, responsible for sales, project delivery, practice management. Um, he's done projects for wireless and wireline carriers, equipment manufacturers, cable MSOs, um, as well as private equity companies in areas of wireless technology, corporate strategy, and wireless solutions. Uh, most recently, George has led projects um, in wireless broadband and 4G product development. Spectrum strategy, RFID, and near field communications, and corporate strategy. So, um, George, why don't you come? He's going to, tell, to talk to us about video, which is a terrific topic here. It's great to be here again. I, I've come to the uh, Wireless Technology Forum a number of times, and, uh, and it's great to see familiar faces, former colleagues, former or current and former clients. It's, it's uh, a lot of fun. And uh, I also have the pleasure of being on the panel with Rob, who I've known for 14 years. And I have to admit, he was funnier tonight than he's ever been. That was really, <laughs> that was pretty impressive. Um, so, so tonight we're going to talk about video, and, and video is, is the elephant in the room. Um, I'm going to talk a, a bit about it from a, a, both a fixed line perspective, a wireless perspective, digital rights, advertising. We're going to sort of do a, a, a flyby on a, on a few different topics, and it's going to uh, uh, tie into some of what, what uh, the other speakers have said. Well, first of all, what's happening with video? Uh, mobile devices are growing exponentially. You know, now we're talking about five plus connected devices in each home you know, for, for certain families as, as, as that continues to grow. Tablets uh, are, are now uh, on their steep growth curve expected to hit about 25 million installed in the U.S. by the end of next year. Of course, faster networks uh, there, there's fiber to the home, there, there's all, all the different uh, iterations of, of DOCSIS and, 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 uh, and other fixed line technologies. But of course with LTE now we're tracking towards close to 75% penetration by the end of next year. So that's another uh, key enabler. With regards to content delivery, I think uh, mirroring some of Rob's points, 86% um, uh, of mobile users use their smartphones while watching TV. There's another concurrent use type statistic. And about 14% of tablet time is spent enjoying video, TV, or other, other content. So you can start looking at the tablet as the mobile video uh, device. And finally, uh, what about linear versus nonlinear? And, and linear video is defined as traditional TV or cable, so you're watching it in, in the same time that, that you, you normally would enjoy it. Nonlinear would include DVR, includes on-demand, and includes all the other over-the-top the, the uh, type, type services. Uh, so 52 million U.S. households uh, are watching uh, internet or video on demand type shows. I think Rob uh, touched on sort of who's doing uh, more of that. Household TV penetration has dropped to 96%. And you say 96 is still high. It was 98. So all of a sudden, we just lost 2% in, in one year. Pretty interesting stuff. With regards to uh, consumption, on the left side of this chart, I've got sort of what's going on inside the home. And overall viewing is staying fairly consistent, growing slightly each year. Of course, uh, the, the, the growth in, in some of the over-the-top models is happening. It's mostly Netflix still. Of course, there's Hulu and YouTube, but those are the big, the, the big gorillas. But you'd be surprised, uh, the, the, the linear uh, model, as well as some of the other offers from the, the classic providers, is still holding on fairly strong, despite a lot of the, uh, the, the momentum uh, that, that you've seen in, in some of the other over-the-top uh, 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 providers. With regards to, to mobile video, so mobile video is that video consumed on a handheld device, 75% of it is actually consumed inside the home. So, so that's an interesting uh, observation with regards to where, where uh, it's, it's all happening. Now, away from home, the average smartphone is now over 400 megs per month, probably increasing since we, uh, since we entered the room and what's happening on it. And you can see uh, at this point about 22% of that, uh, of the time that people are using a, a, a smartphone is now on sort of media-oriented type activities, either, either uh, video slash music 
or also uh, on browsing, and that's expected to, to increase. Well, what's, what's happening with mobile video? Uh, th those of you that, that have been in the industry for a few years remember you know, all the push around mobile TV uh, around sort of the 05 to 08 time frame. And in fact, I was looking at some of the old uh, reports to prepare for tonight, and, and there were people that were absolutely saying, you know, the, you know, the, uh, the killer app for video on a, on a smartphone will be linear TV. It won't be this other stuff, this, the, this uh, time shifted, place shifted, and it, it will be TV. But I also heard, actually, I'm going to steal it from Andre when we had breakfast last week. Uh, Andre, uh, and I don't know who, who, uh, who you're referencing, but the, the original idea of the internet was a TV. Channels and dialing up, it's what we're familiar with. And the point is, the internet didn't evolve into TV. It's something fairly different. Video, uh, mobile video, is not going to be linear TV. Uh, you can see that there's still some hockey sticks uh, uh, associated with it. But when you look at, 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 at studies with regards to a uh, younger population, especially, uh, and, and as well as some of the, uh, the other demographics, um, mobile is very much tied to, you know, I, I want to snack on video or I want to see what I want to see. Um, and it's, it's very customized, it's very individual, and it probably won't be sort of your, your classic uh, linear TV type model. In terms of uh, in general, uh, nonlinear type video and wh where that's uh, occurring, I, I, I uh, noticed a, um, a study with regards to what's happening in Europe as well, and it's fairly consistent with the U.S. But over the next sort of three to four years, you know, about 75% of the video consumed in the home will still be a, uh, of the linear format. So, so you can see that the TV and some of the ways that we enjoy video is not changing that quickly. But then when you, when you uh, look at, I'm sorry, I got it backwards, but 85%, it's the inverse of 15, whereas with regards to more mobile devices, uh, it's about 75% of the video that will be consumed will be more nonlinear. With, with regards to over the top and what, what's happening there, of course, you know, on, on the left side, you see the traditional value chain from content owners, content aggregators, service providers. When you add it all up, it's close to $400 billion. So it is a, it is a massive industry as, as we know it. Currently, the, the size of the over-the-top uh, industry is, is very small compared to it, about $5 billion. Most of the revenue is tied up with, with Netflix. The, 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 the folks on, on the left side have seen what's happened to music and won't let it happen to them again. And I think there's some very smart people within the content owner uh, 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 area that certainly understand that they need to get their product distributed into more devices as, as, as these shifts are, are occurring. So they're working constructively with, with the cable companies and with the, the ILEX that are big into video to, 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 to make that work out. At the same time, you know, they can't trust that that, that single channel is, is going to be the one. So they're, they're proceeding fairly uh, fairly cautiously, but I think you're, you're now going to see in 2012 much, much more activity. So just yesterday, uh, Sony announced that they are uh, uh, preparing to launch, frankly, a competitive offer to cable. Uh, they're talking to other media companies to, in effect, get their, their TV programming uh, onto this channel. It's internet oriented and it'll be exclusive on Sony devices. So. Yeah, Sony is, is, is certainly not quite the, 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 the formidable company that it was a, a number of years ago, but they do have uh, some of that vertical integration. And, and you'll see that as a, sort of a major test as to where this is uh, all heading. And, and the, the, the two big uh, elephants in the room that haven't really uh, moved in with any degree of great success are, of course, Apple and Google, and, and we're all watching and waiting there. Uh, we were talking, I guess, earlier about Netflix, and of course, Netflix is the is the fun one to kick around with their stock going from 300 bucks to 75. I think maybe it's about 90 right now. Uh, but at the same time, you know, while Netflix has made some very poor strategic decisions, I think under the cover there's still a fairly loyal customer base with regards to Netflix. Um, it does have its niche, and and uh, for for folks that 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 are are. Um, looking at for the Hawaii Five-0 reruns, and I, I know my mom's a very loyal uh, Netflix subscriber as well, and probably hasn't even heard that they're they're uh, going through this PR nightmare. Um, it, it's it, it is the leading over-the-top provider, and and while some of their content is certainly getting more expensive, they don't have access to all the right content. It, it'll fill its niche, so I, I'm not uh, writing their their demise quite yet. 
With regards to licensing and DRM, this is, this is one of the key uh, uh, struggles with the entire uh, model at this point. If you own content, you certainly want to be able to monetize it all the way up and down the chain. This, this directly ties into cloud because as a buyer of content, you certainly want to buy once, enjoy many times. You want it to be on all your devices, automatically synced, and, and, and works well. You know, currently, none of those models exist in, in, in any um, you know, very uh, e easy to use manner. So there's certainly a lot of uh, uh, a lot of consideration being given to different DRM uh, paradigms, both with regards to the more uh, the, the, the more traditional linear type approach where, where the licensing agrees are more around affiliate agreements, uh, as well as the over over the top players where it's more around rev share and some other innovative models uh, that, that that's going on there. But what what's important in DRM? It's encryption and decryption. It's digital copy protection and it's key management. And of course, these are, uh, if you're looking at the VC perspective, certainly companies that are active in some of these enabling technologies are going to do pretty well. Next up is advertising. And, and you know, Rob had the, the, the perfect uh, setup for this, and that is you know, the, the discrepancy between uh, time spent, and you go back to some of, some of the uh, statistics from earlier, versus where, where are the ad dollars. I had the benefit of going to the, uh, the, the Rutberg Wireless uh, Influencers Conference last month uh, out west. And me on many panels, many times, everyone said the same thing that, 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 uh, that uh, was said earlier, and that is if, if Nielsen or somebody can figure out how to rate advertising and how to give uh, advertisers the comfort that they are getting the, the right kind of return on investment, um, you know, then, then this will, will unlock much of the activity in the marketplace. So it is a bit of a roadblock currently. The concurrent usage model is certainly a driver of it. Uh, so I think back to, to my days in college at, at, at uh, University of Virginia, we had, we had a, and, and Perry Walters in the room, he might remember this, that there was a, a, a major development back then around eye-gazed response technology. And, and, that, and it was really uh, focused on, on handicapped individuals that couldn't move their arms. You could look at con computer screens and, 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 and interact just by looking. And you know, why not uh, deploy something like that within the home so you have your, your sensor and, and it knows exactly where you're looking. I mean, something like that might be what it takes to, to help get, the, uh, get the, the, the more specifics around advertising. But we're all getting tracked. The information is getting populated into many databases, uh, uh, you know, whether it's a mobile device, whether it's your location, whether it's your cookies, your, your web usage, and, and it's all getting assembled uh, as, as we speak. So with that kind of information, that, then it, it, it can certainly tie into uh, directed advertising uh, with regards to, to cable. We're now talking about true two-way type cable technologies to get you um, to, to, to react you know, at, that, at that point of enjoyment, but certainly that kind of information can follow you into the store and be part of an overall mobile advertising type effort. So to, to conclude, I've got three summary predictions for 2012, and of course predicting for 2012 is sometimes harder than predicting uh, even, even further out. But for 2012, home is still where the, the, the TV is. You know, linear programming, you know, some over-the-top models you know, accompanied by your big 55-inch LCD, high-def TV, there's still certainly a lot of runway left this year, especially given, I think, the caution that, that a lot of folks are approaching the industry. But with that said, you're going to start seeing different devices being used for different things. And, and the tablet, to me, starts looking like your mobile video device, uh, as well as many other things. Over the top is, is, is like a Twinkie. You know, it tastes good, it satisfies you briefly, but it's not, it's not where it needs to go yet. Certainly, the, the access to the relevant content will, will need to continue to occur. Uh, but over the long term, I'm very bullish on over-the-top models. You see where Sony's going. You know, I heard some very eloquent speakers that, that you know, own content that certainly want to make sure it's promoted in the right areas. And then, of course, what I didn't mention earlier is the, with TV everywhere and certainly some of the other initiatives from some of the more traditional uh, telcos and, and cable codes, they're already uh, 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 internalizing it and, and, and promoting uh, over-the-top internet-oriented uh, uh, plays as well, more as a retention strategy. And then finally, mobile video is very tied to, to non-linear, so sort of 
uh, uh, I guess contradicting uh, my, my point slightly, is when you think about mobile, you think about uh, mobile DVR, you think about on-demand type video, you, you think about uh, uh, customized, but you don't think about mobile TV, at least that's the way I'm, I'm, I'm viewing uh, that, uh, for, certainly for 2012. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Outstanding. Our next speaker is uh, Rock Khanna, who is a senior partner with McKinsey Company.